common problem, Andrew. Um, I know another another lovely man who came to me some months ago to meditate, and uh, of course he's problems like a lot of people have with, with drugs and alcohol. It's just this, you know, he's, he's full of enthusiasm and then he slips away. Time passes and, you know, and then he comes. <laughs> I hear from him again, but it's, it's it's quite usual, dear. What can you do? There are various things that help. If anybody had the, you know, the absolute answer. It's said that the most important requirement on this path is determination. Um, you've got to want it. And often people want it a bit, <laughs> but not enough. So they'll do a bit, and when something else comes along, they'll miss their practice, and then they'll miss another practice, and you know, you'll find yourself slipping. Well, Good company is a is a support, Andrew. Um, when I learned to meditate, it was it was quite a strong discipline. I had to go down. I was had my first farm here in Bakewell. It was very difficult for me to leave the farm, and I had to go to London. I had to attend regularly. We had groups there, and uh, not only was it a huge expense, it was terrible leaving the animals and just you went in times of haymaking when they were giving birth and that, but it was a great trial for me. But I recognise now how useful it was, helping me to put the work first. Yes, that was what the way it was put to me, put the work first. But there again, you need determination to do that, don't you? But the more you can see it as or the more perhaps you long for an answer. You long for what the world cannot provide and you recognize that this way is a way to finding that heart's desire, that which you long for more than anything else. Of course, that helps, doesn't it? That gives you the motive to work for it. If you can see, see the purpose, you know, to begin with, people just tend to have a personal purpose. They just want a bit of peace or something. Well, that's all right. We start with what we've got. Um, maybe this last few days has opened it up for you. You see the scale of the work and the importance of it which may help encourage you to keep to keep it up. It applies to all of us. I find it encouraging myself that you, know, you should come here and support me, and I feel supported by it and encouraged. I'm sure Phil does too. on the ground is important because the problem really is usually is nearly always in the mind and the movement of the mind now to help to steady this down that's why it's useful to keep the body still this is why in meditation you usually start off by making the body comfortable sitting in a way that the body supported and can sit still that's why cross-legged, if you can do it, is such a good thing, because it, it holds you in a very steady, still position. Um, everybody recognises, don't they, that it's a good idea to t t switch the computer off for, for a, half an hour or an hour before we go to sleep. Why? Because the mind, it, the mind is very agitated, isn't it, with the vibrations, and, um, and it needs time to settle down. Let's look and consider what faith is. Now, for most of our lives, we work with 
ideas in the mind. It's a good idea to meditate because it helps other people maybe. Oh, it's a good idea to meditate because it slows your heartbeat down or something. Um, but do you see, what is it that enables us to sit here in stillness and feel something we can't describe but which is so undeniable, undeniably right. It's not ordinary knowledge, is it? Now this is what, this is higher knowledge. The knowledge, like everything else, has levels, levels of consciousness. There's lower knowledge, there's higher knowledge. And the highest knowledge is faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Now how does faith strengthen? By putting it into practice. It is, we're, we're, it's a cloud of unknowing, we don't know where we're going. So it's a journey into the unknown. Unknown in the sense that you can box it in and analyse it. You can't. It's a journey into the infinite, beyond knowing. Where is the end of freedom? Where is the end of love? Hmm. Oh. But my word, it's it's certain sure, isn't it? There's a surety once you get the hang of what faith is all about, which makes knowledge almost laughable. I love that. <laughs> Ludovic and I are good at quoting the Bible, aren't we? have got an answer to everything. <laughs> but you see, the wisdom of man is foolishness to God. And it is, isn't it? The wisdom of man is foolishness to God. <laughs> our little knowing, <laughs> our matchbox knowledge <laughs> compared to the grandeur, the majesty of faith. That's why we're called to, as best we're able, live by faith, you see. Faith is what keeps, I suppose, keeps, keeps us practicing, plodding up the hill to practice every day. Faith is really inspiration, isn't it? In the sense of it's the spirit. It's not from books. It's not from going to university. It's it's, it's the uh, teaching of the spirit. Surprisingly not. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose I've, I've missed a, more than a handful of practices in all my life. I, I don't know why. I've been very lucky in that respect. Mm -hmm. Very fortunate. Even though if I didn't always do the allocated uh, time, but, uh, but uh, very few occasions. No, I've never really lapsed. I, think, I tell you why, because I loved it, dear. It wasn't difficult for me. I did love it, even when, you know, as a farmer, there were uh, there was, you know, other things clamouring for attention. But, but I loved it from the beginning. So it's enjoyable work. Well, I wouldn't say enjoyable. I wouldn't use that word. No. As a young man, I was quite tormented by. Uh, I was desperately anxious to 
to, to, to find what to do, look for a reason in life. You know, all the answers that life gave me, you know, get a career and do this and that, it didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was so looking for something that made sense to me, something that, that, that uh, I could do. And um, I loved the wide open spaces. I was, I loved the mountains and the deserts and get up on the hills. I couldn't seem to fit within the world of man. And I started to meditate. And the very first time I practiced, I went to London to learn. And I caught the late night train back to Bakewell to fend my, see my animals. I was sitting in St Pancras Station waiting room in that grotty, you know, depressing <laughs> end, of, end of the world. And uh, I meditated. And I, I can see it now, it just opened up like that. And I realized I didn't have to go to the mountains to find the space I longed for. It was all within me. And, uh, and I'd also been reading at the time a little book called The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis. And I suddenly realized, wow, oh, this is the kingdom of God. This is what they're talking about. This is exactly what it is. And, uh, I got the bit between my teeth, as they say then. You know, like when a horse does that and runs away from you. <laughs> and in a way, of course, there's been lapses and uh, but, uh, in that, and not lapses in practice, but lapses in that enthusiasm. But basically, uh, I thought, this is it. <laughs> yes, the, the decision's part of it, Ludovic, certainly. I remember another sequence that, we, that was given us at the school. Yes, this might be useful to you. You, you say, uh, talking about putting it into practice. Yes, this will be useful. Um, you see, you sit there in your chair in the aeroplane. Shall I pick up the paper and read that or, or go to sleep or what? And then, and then you think, oh, or shall I meditate? Oh, no, it's too much bore to meditate. I ought to do that. Better look at the pictures in the magazine. But you see, impulse, and then the next thing comes decision. What do I do? Do I turn this way or that way? Impulse, decision, that's the important thing. You've got to decide, I'm going to do it. And then the moment you do it, you look, look, listen and look, or you turn inside and say the mantra, you've impulse, decision. Ah, then you've got to make the little effort of closing your eyes and saying the mantra. And then you feel the pull of the way. And then something seems to come to help you, doesn't it? The pull of the way. You begin to realize, ah, oh, this is it. It works. And then that pulls you along the way. Impulse, decision, effort. Just a little effort to put it into practice. Pull of the way. Yes, that might be useful to you. I've often remembered it. Because very often the impulse comes in we say, no, I don't want it. I'm too busy. That's a very common one. I'll do it later. Very, of course, you don't. <laughs> impulse, decision, effort. And that's our opportunity. And the impulse comes as a grace. Because we cannot remember. Mem like memory comes in. It just comes, doesn't it? From the, That's why you say memory is a grace. We're saved by grace, the impulse. We tur turn towards God or away from God. It is in fact the only choice we have in life, real choice, yeah. to turn towards God or away from God. Towards the work or away from the work. 